Hello and welcome to your program of choice, Health Affair on AIT. I'm a regular anchor, Ushomo Daniels. On the program, we discuss critical health issues, challenges of women and children, with a view to finding lasting solutions. Today, we shall be focusing on a special topic, prosthetics. Prosthetics is the evaluation, fabrication and custom fittings of artificial limbs known as prosthesis. Before we delve into this special topic, let's go to our new segment for some reports. The World Health Organization, WHO Logistics Hub in Dubai, has delivered 85 metric tons of life-saving medical supplies to Ethiopia, the largest single shipment of humanitarian cargo by the hub so far. The supplies, including essential medicines, trauma and emergency surgery kits, infusions, consumables, equipment and cholera kits, were flown by a charter flight donated by the United Arab Emirates that landed in Addis Ababa on the 10th of September. The supplies will address the urgent needs of more than 150,000 people. WHO representative in Ethiopia, Dr. Burima Hama Sambo said it was an important demonstration of solidarity with people in need and provide relief to hundreds of thousands of families who are gripping with a difficult humanitarian situation. While these supplies are critical to saving lives, WHO and partners are working closely to address the health needs of nearly 2.5 million people in the current crisis. The shipment to Ethiopia wrapped up a historic week for the WHO Dubai Logistics Hub, dispatching over four times the weekly average. The operation shipped over 450 metric tons of medical supplies, valued at more than 4.3 million US dollars in support of cholera outbreak response in Nigeria, critical shortages of medicines in Afghanistan, and trauma and surgical supplies to Syria and Yemen. The WHO's logistics hub in Dubai plays an instrumental role by rapidly responding to health emergencies around the world. Since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the hub has successfully delivered 90 million US dollars worth of health supplies through 705 shipments to over 120 countries. The United States Center for Disease Control and Prevention, USCDC, on Monday kicked off a two weeks capacity building program in Lagos for Nigerian experts on public health emergency response. The training seeks to certify the first cohort of 40 participants drawn from the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, state level ministries of health, the Nigerian Port Health Services, and the Nigerian military in public health emergency management professional certification. According to the US CDC Nigeria country director, the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic illustrates now more than ever the importance of ensuring the public health and healthcare systems. The training, a first of its kind in Nigeria, adapted from US CDC Atlanta, equips emergency managers, incident managers, state epidemiologists, first responders, watch managers, and other health experts with the knowledge, competencies, and skill set they need to respond to public health emergencies. The training is part of the US government's efforts to support pandemic preparedness globally. The federal government has re-emphasized the need to make COVID-19 vaccination compulsory in the country. The chairman of the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, Boss Mustafa, who made this known, added that plans were in place to make the vaccination compulsory for all federal public servants. Mustafa who said that the decision was necessary to ensure safety in the workplace and at home added that Nigeria would have received about 52 million doses of vaccines by the second quarter of 2022 and the vaccines would be available to go around. He advised Nigerians to always carry their vaccination card details on their electronic devices for easy access, most especially those 
traveling outside the country. Members of Radiation and Clinical Oncologists of Nigeria, ARCON, are calling on Nigerian government to step up the implementation and provision of infrastructure for cancer care in Nigeria. The members who also called for the inclusion of cancer care on the National Health Insurance Scheme were speaking at a pre-conference briefing on Wednesday in Lagos to kickstart the fourth annual scientific conference and annual general meeting with the theme, Oncology Startups in Nigeria, a roadmap from conception to implementation. Crucial topic, most important, relevant as regards to cancer care in Nigeria today, today. If you look around today, a lot of Nigerians are, are, are moving out to India, to, to, to South Africa, to Egypt. Uh, what's their mission? To get cancer care. To get cancer care. It means either locally we, haven't, we don't have what it takes completely, or there are still vital things they need that we are not providing. So this association is here to make that happen for patients like that. So radiotherapy is crucial. But presently in Nigeria, we have very few cases of radiotherapy. They are scattered very few in Nigeria. And the essence in, uh, in this conference is to find out how we can increase the number of radiotherapy centers in Nigeria, how, what is required for startup, and how do we mobilize what is required. Well, intensive. Unlike in surgery, or ONG, or pediatrics, or internal medicine, where you need some millions to open up a shop and you are practicing. In radiotherapy, the, the, the smallest radiotherapy practice, you will need billions to start. Because those equipment are in millions of dollars. Multiply by the current rate and see what you have. Multiply by the current rate and you see what you have. That's the challenges we are facing. So we are asking uh, government people, um, those in the ministry, uh, CMDs, uh, um, uh, other specialists, um, uh, private practice who are looking for avenues where to, uh, to, uh, to invest their money. They should come around and we put it together and find out a working principle on how to increase the therapy centers in Nigeria. And um, we want to specially appreciate um, our chief host, um, the wife of His Excellency, um, Governor of Lagos, and other first ladies that are going to be supporting her tomorrow, and also the wife of the Vice President of the Nation to support us during this very um, special ceremony. We know that, um, just as our President has rightly mentioned, um, activities are in top gear to make sure that the Lagos experience will be something we're going to be, that's going to be memorable. Worried about a statistical projection that by the year 2025, 20 million new cancer cases will be diagnosed globally, they called for regular screening for timely intervention. So addressing the issue from the point of prevention, uh, because they, when you prevent, you have lesser cases on your hands. So that's the, the, the first approach. And then uh, there are also um, areas of uh, early detection, okay? When you detect early, you have less burden to handle. So early detection requires somebody being aware of the condition. It requires somebody having access to areas where that detection can be done. Mm -hmm. It involves areas where uh, screening also is available. But for cases who have already been uh, developed, and they are marching towards uh, uh, advanced uh, stages, what they need is therapy, treatment. And uh, the more centers you have, the more will be available. They don't have to travel very far. And then the other aspect of it is, is the equipment that you are going to put in those centers. Are those equipment functional? We must develop the attitude of maintenance. You know, there's no point buying a, 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 a expensive materials in there and then you wait for them to break down. With current numerical strength of members put at 80, the Association of Radiation and Clinical Oncologists are a group of specialists trained in the management and treatment of cancer using ionizing radiation, chemotherapy, and lots more. 
The scientific conference by the association also has as its top teams reducing health disparities in Africa through clinical trials and cancer genomics, telemedicine in cancer care, amongst others. Over 100 widows, youths, and officers' wives have benefited from the skill acquisition and empowerment program by the Nigerian Armed Forces Resentment Center Officers' Wives Association, NAFCOA. The event took place at Bade Oil, Nafrik, Oshodi, on the 14th of September, 2021. The Empowerment Program is one of the many initiatives the association has organized over the years to enable wife of officers, widows, and youths live a good life. Experts from the World Health Organization, WHO, the Federal Ministry of Health, and the Lagos State Ministry of Health are calling for a greater collaboration with the media and private sector to eliminate neglected tropical diseases. Speaking at a workshop on data dissemination on the successful mass administration of medicines for the control of schistosomiasis in Lagos, they noted the state was a flagship center for other 36 states to emulate if the country must eliminate neglected tropical diseases. We have several diseases on the list and the level of endemicity varies from one LGS to the other. Some LGA are prevalent for particular neglected tropical disease like soil transmitter remedies, schistosomiasis, lymphatic filariasis, while some are not prevalent for the others. The bone of contention here for this particular data, data dissemination is the intervention that we you know, uh, implemented in 2019 against schistosomiasis in about seven LGA in the state, and we had a very good therapeutic uh, coverage of about 87 percent and we need to you know uh, disseminate this data call the stakeholders so that going forward we can improve on the implementation that we had with respect to uh, mass administration of medicine against histosomiasis. After swimming in uh, stagnant water or dirty water they went for fishing come back Within a day or two, three, you started seeing them urinating and you see blood stain or blood in their urine. They were not sick and nothing happened. You see people eating snails. A few days later, you see them urinating blood. They have ingested the worms called Skytosoma that lead to disease called Skytosomiasis. First of all, you don't need to involve yourself in entering that kind of water and set and bathing and cooking with it and washing because you can ingest the, the, the over of that uh, worm. Two, you need to eat a well-cooked uh, snail or anything at all pot so that you will not be able to ingest or swallow that over. So it's very, very common. You can now see that when we talk about sanitation and hygiene practices here, it's one of the kind of things to eliminate that. Medically, it's easily treated. We have a drug that is being donated to this country from WHO and other donor agencies that we treat uh, skeletosomiasis with a two tablet of prasicantel. You are out of the sickness and you live comfortably. So that is a common treatment. And we are calling on the press now to go out there and enlighten the populace that skeletosomiasis is one of the diseases that can be treated and can be eliminated in the country. And it needs effort of everybody. The community have to participate. People have to be enlightened on how to practice wash program very well. And we show that when you have people that have this kind of disease, you report them to uh, uh, the nearest health facility. We have lymphatic filariasis. We have schistosomiasis. We have soil transmitted helminths that we are dealing with in Lagos. So please, my plea is that our private sector partners, do you have bank in Lagos? Different sectors operate in Lagos. And you know that these neglected tropical diseases can affect anyone. So please, 
As you look at your corporate social responsibility, remember that there is neglected tropical disease body in Lagos State. That's my plea. We have a hashtag today. I hope the press will take this hashtag and share it with our corporate um, partners. Private sector engagement is important if we will eliminate this disease. We can't do it alone. We have to work together. Out of the 20 neglected tropical diseases identified by WHO, Nigeria has about 15, which include schistosomiasis, onchocerciasis, commonly known as river blindness, leprosy, trachoma, and lots more. The World Health Organization, WHO, has set 2030 target as the year for global elimination of neglected tropical diseases. The Executive Director, Health Emergency Initiative, Pasco Achunini, is calling for a quick resolution of the ongoing strike. Speaking in an interview with our crew, Pasco lamented the effect of the over one month old strike action on emergency services. We are pained, we are disturbed that many of the indigent patients we support are not able to access care at this time and it is it's causing a lot of avoidable death. So we make even the doctors also as and other health practitioners, to the extent that government miss you somewhere in the middle, please you can also concede for the sake of ordinary citizens. Let's put Nigeria first. Let's remember the common man. Let's remember posterity. Posterity will, will judge. Posterity will give credit. Posterity would um, give look at what happened. And we all know that we are passing through a journey. So please, government, stakeholders, and everyone concerned, let's uh, give this a human heart, a human face. And I think the country is be will be better for it. We still have this country. We still have hope in this country. Let's work for this country uh, to be, be the great country it is ordained to be by God. Pascal Achunini also appealed to Nigerians to stay protected from the Delta variant of COVID-19 virus. To preserve your life because COVID will blow over. Other crisis the country is facing will also blow over. But if you are diligent in the way and manner, you attend those parties, maybe avoid the parties, may wear your nose mask, uh, ensure that non-important travels are avoided. You could also be alive by the time COVID comes to an end and then attend multiple parties and other things you want to. This variant does not come with the usual symptoms. Most times, you someone is infected, but you're asymptomatic. And because it's mutating, it takes different shapes and forms, it's important that you avoid getting infected at all. Welcome back. There are more than 1 million annual limb amputations globally, one in every 30 seconds. The International Diabetes Federation, IDF, predicts that the current figure will increase by the year 2030. A lot of people across the world have their limbs amputated for different reasons. In Nigeria, the main causes of limb loss are vascular diseases, diabetes, cancer, road crashes, birth defects, and lots more. Whatever the cause of limb loss, the focus on the program today is the working aids they require, known as prosthesis. Prosthesis enhances the function and lifestyle of persons with limb loss. The cost of this device is getting out of the reach of most people who need it. More disturbing is the fact that it has to be replaced regularly. This prompted my interest to focus on the topic. Sheung Ayodeji is 27 years old. 
She got involved in a motorcycle accident in 2017 that resulted in the amputation of her right leg. My leg got cut off immediately at the scene of the accident. I have a prosthetic leg. It helps me move. Even if in the house I hop and there are times I actually have pain. Cases of limb loss are on the increase in Nigeria and most of them are due to congenital defect, mismanaged fractures, complications arising from traditional bone setting, diabetes and lots more. According to some parents who have had the experience with their children, the limbs are meant to be replaced within four to six months at the cost that ranges from 200,000 to a million plus. This situation is causing a lot of frustration for affected families coupled with the stigmatization. Most of it can be very frustrating for a parent when all of a sudden maybe you have planned that your child will use this leg for maybe nine months, then under six months you have to change it. So that. The second thing is the availability of the components in the country. They are imported. We don't manufacture here in Nigeria. So that's one place I want to call the government in because we need to start manufacturing. We need to start equipping, you know. And then the third frustration for me is the stigmatization and discrimination that goes with it. And again, where I call in the government to come in and ensure enforcement and implementation of the law that has been put in place. You still have schools that reject uh, children that have been amputated. I also visited a section of the National Orthopedic Hospital at Igbobi in Lagos, where prostheses are fabricated locally. For the amputation done, amputation, any patient with above knee amputation, this is used to replace what you have lost. This can make them work very well. And this is the below the knee, this is the below the knee prosthesis. So when you become S, uh, prosthesis SEX, that's the polar, that is two, but SIX, that's the prosthesis, that is one. So this is below the knee. Anybody that lost his limb below the knee, this is what we give to them to work. And this is another type of this is local limits, those cases. So sir, how, how affordable are, are these things? Very affordable. This is two in this hospital, National Orthopedic Hospital, Gobi, this is two hundred and fifty thousand. And why the imported type is four fifty thousand? That's below the knee, four fifty thousand. And this above the knee prosthetics, this is this is our seven hundred and fifty thousand. This is a this is a type of artificial limb is for the below the knee. The patient has been amputated below the knee. This is the type of artificial limb we use and put to replace their lost part of the limbs. And uh, this is another type of artificial limb we've amputated here. This is above the knee. That's the patient that lost or uh, must have lost the ankle or knee joint from the main leg. Then we use this to replace the, the part he has lost. And this can bend from here. When the patient sits down, it can be bent. And flex and extend. Then when, uh, and after this, we still will have a cosmetic from to cover the whole body. So when we finish it, it will look like a normal, normal leg. Mm. So that's the part about that. And we have uh, auto six. This is fabricated with plastic. A patient that has a polymalitics, they are not standing in their own. We do this in order to stabilize and mobilize the limbs to support for them to be able to work very well. Mm. So. That is it. We have other units. And then this is a uh, this is type of uh, uh, other type of prosthesis. This one is for hand. The person has lost part of his hand. This is type of artificial limb we use to replace the part they have lost. This is called above uh, elbow prosthesis. Still have some parts here that will replace the fingers of which we are still working on it. So that's what we have here. So how do you get the material you use? How do you get to do this? I thought that this is the physio from abroad and all that. Yeah, like all these parts you are saying, like we, the materials come from abroad, but we couple here. Like this, all this you see, they come in pieces. But we couple everything here. But part of this process is made here. From here up to this place, is making this National Orthopedic Hospital, Gobi. 
you can or you don't like when you see a patient, you cannot fabricate a process from abroad and just put it on the patient because the patient is an individual person. So we take the cast of the patient with our POP uh, bandage, then we fabricate the one that would enter the patient leg. But the parts we're going to order it from abroad. Then we have the parts we do here from. This part, we fabricated everything from here up to this place. This is the only important part that is here. You understand? This foot is, is important, but from here, you can see wood here. From here up to this place, we fabricated it. And this is also served as below the processes. Yes, but we import the material from Germany, Turkey, Indian, and so on. So this, is a, this is intervention. How long does it take? Somebody's using this thing. How long can somebody use this thing before it requires a change? Wow. Uh, like the food, the manufacturer is five years, the food slave used for five years and you replace. That is manufacturer's specification for the food. But the other part, so many things can be responsible for you to change the, the processes. If you are the first wearer, if you wear the process for the first time in the next three, four months, the leg might go shrink. Definitely when you put it inside the processes, it might be loose. So now I bring you to come back and change the just part of the process, not the whole process is the last time. So you change the parts. That are, like, within six months or thereabouts, you can change the top. But not the complete. Do you understand? So that's it. So in doing this, what are the challenges? And then what do you think can be done to improve this your specialization in Nigeria? Well, training and retrained. The member of staff that fabricated the processes in this hospital need to be trained and retrained to meet some of the standards out there. So, what kind of facilities do you require, apart from what you have shown us now, to make this go on well? And then, what is the advice to Nigerian government, to people out there? What do people need to know about this place? Yeah, we, we have so many facilities here that we're using the fabricated discs. We have oven here, we have router machine, we have van, so we have different type of equipment in using to fabricate all this. Then for the two governments, they need to be equipped Department, piano department, more and more to meet up with the standard out there because we are we are a bit backward in terms of the facilities. Fine, National Hospital Hospital maybe are trying their best in terms of the equipment because there are some we have here that at least we are trying to check process center in Nigeria now. You will find some latest equipment in piano department here, National Hospital Hospital Ibobi. But they need to do more for us so that we can be able to follow our counterpart out there to meet up with what they are doing. But right now in Ibobi, at least we are talking about center in Nigeria. Before we take one or two, three, we take, talk about National Autobiotic Hospital, it will be. These legs now, if someone's using it, can nobody touch them with water? Yes, there are, it can be touched with, like this type. This, color, this type is called confessional. This can be, you can see this is plastic. Hmm. This is just, it's, it's still going through post-sex. Thereafter, it's going to be laminated. The whole body will come like this, but in a brown color shape, in a brown color. So it can be touched with water. But this type, it's, it's, it's a cosmetic foam. After this, with the finish of this go with foam, we foam it like something like this. So it cannot, this you have to, as much as possible, to avoid water with this type. It's called modular. Because it's foam on to cover the whole body. But with this, it's at least, you can even bag with it, and uh, when you get to the bathroom, you turn it upside down to the, dry the water. So in the next few years, what do you see of this? Where do you see this going in the next few years? I think well, hospital. Yeah, in the next few years, if the government of Nigeria, Kojosa with National Orthopedic Hospital, trained the staff of piano department and they equip us more in terms of matching material, at least we can compete with any piano department in the world because we have the profession already. What we need is just more training and more equipment and more material. With what other people are using abroad, if you have the same thing here as well, we can compete with anybody in the world. That's why I'm concerned. National Autobiography can compete with anybody in the world. How affordable is this to, to get this fixed? How affordable? Yeah, it is affordable. You know, like I told you earlier, these components are imported. We import them from abroad. Where this, in this hospital, this costs 450000 below the knee prosthetics. Costs 450000 That is the imported type. Call it modular, that's the potter type. And this is a locally made type, and this costs uh, 250000 in, uh, in this country, and this department. That's each one I'm showing you that just below the knee prosthesis. It's an amputation done below the knee. So this is the type of prosthesis you use. 
Then in this hospital, this is above the knee, prosthesis. When a patient has been, has been amputated through up above the knee, when the knee is not there, the ankle is not there, this type of prosthesis they use. And this costs 750000 in this hospital. Micro, known in Nigeria as Titus, is a common name applied to a number of different species of pelagic fish, mostly from the family Scombridae. They are found in both temperate and tropical seas, mostly living along the coast or offshore in the oceanic environment. The Atlantic macro, also known as Boston macro, Norwegian macro, or Scottish macro, is native to the temperate waters of the Mediterranean Sea, the Black Sea, and the Northern Atlantic Ocean, where it is extremely common and occurs in huge shoals to about 200 meters down the waters. It has an elongated body, steel blue marks with wavy black lines dorsally and silver whites centrally. Its snout is long and pointed. The eyes are large and the teeth are small, sharp and conical and it has a velvet-like skin. Macro is an important fish both culturally and economically particularly for communities along the southern coast of Norway where it swims close to shore. Its popularity in these regions has earned it the name the National Fish of Southern Norway. Mackerel is a highly commercial species because of its meat, which is strong in flavor, high in oil content and omega-3 fatty acids. It is used, therefore, as a result of this in many cuisines all over the world. The oily fish has been linked to many health benefits, including a lower risk of heart disease, improved mental ability, protection from cancer, rheumatoid arthritis, and lots more. On our clinical segment, we give you vital tips to stay healthy. Let's go there. Welcome your contributions on how to improve the nation's health sector and human lives on our perception segment. Before they attended to us, it took a while and they made us sit for a while. After sitting down, they now told us that they can't attend to us because they're on strike. But luckily for us, we were able to find a way to just meet some doctors, but most of the doctors are not around. Just yeah, resident doctors are not around, just few doctors that are just around that were able to attend to us, but as it is, the place is empty. So government should um, look for ways to stop this, because if somebody is in an emergency now, someone, people can lose their lives in this process, because, because of strike now, people that have serious issues cannot be attended to. The federal government should look for a way to make the strike not affect hospitals and all these things are important. This is where we draw the curtain on the program today. Please kindly support us by advertising your health products and services at a very subsidized rate on the program. My name is Oshua Mowa Daniels. See you same time next week. And please keep staying safe.